Hello, my name is Daniel Perez and I'm with Alhambra American Little League and today we're going to be talking about scorekeeping, specifically how to set up for the game before the game starts. The first thing we're going to talk about is what to bring to the park with you. You want to make sure to bring at least two or three pencils, preferably mechanical pencils, so that if a traditional pencil tip breaks you're not running around looking for a sharpener. You also want to make sure you have an eraser because everyone makes mistakes. You want a hard surface to write on. If you're going to be keeping pitch count, you all should also consider a clicker. And I also recommend you bring someone with you, a friend who can keep track of the game in case you miss something and you need to ask a question or one of you keeps the score, one of you keeps the pitch count. It's always nice to have someone there with you. After you come to the park, you're prepared, you want to go over to the snack bar and pick up the scorebook. And though it varies by brand, most scorebooks are going to look something like this with all of the diamonds for writing in what happens during each at bat. You're going to have the space for the lineup and the information at the top. So when you get the scorebook before the game starts, you can go ahead and fill in the information for the teams. So if the Braves are playing and they're the home team, we're going to go ahead and note that. They're playing against the Yankees, where they're playing, Granada Diamond 1, for instance, and then when we're playing. At the end of the game, we can write down what time the game ends, ask the umpire to sign it, and then we can continue. So after you fill in this information, we're going to want to get these lineup cards from the managers. So about 15 minutes before the game, you should ask both of the managers for their lineup cards. Very rarely will they have it 15 minutes before the game, but the sooner you ask for it, the sooner you'll get it, because there's nothing worse than getting the lineup card 10 seconds before the first pitch and having to write that information down. The lineup cards are going to look something like this. The managers will have filled in their information, and usually, ideally, this is what the lineup cards will be looking like with the first name, last name, uniform number, and their position. If this numerical denoting of the position is confusing to you, you want to go ahead and make sure you learn to commit these numbers to memory, the numerical abbreviations for the positions. Pitcher, catcher, first base, second base, third base, shortstop, left, center, and right field is the chronological order for the numerical abbreviations. And that will come to you after a few games. If you get the scorecards or the lineup cards looking like this with the positions in shorthand, that's fine. We just want to stick to the numerical standard. But if you do get something that looks like this from the managers, you want to respectfully return them and ask for more information. Specifically, we need to know the uniform numbers, and for most divisions, we need to know the position numbers as well. So for the tiny division, we only need to know who's pitching and catching. We need to track that during the game for pitch count, which we'll talk about more later. But if you're playing in the minor, major, or junior divisions, we want to know the positions because it's important when tracking substitutions, which we'll talk about later. After we get our lineup card, we're going to go back to our scorebook and transfer the information in the lineup card into the lineup section of the scorebook. So ideally, the information will look something like this. We're going to go ahead and transfer that information into the book. Make sure you keep track of the boxes because each single box corresponds to one player, so skip spaces as appropriate. These extra lines are for substitutions, which again we will talk about later. One other thing that we do need to include on this page before the game begins is right up here we want to include the number of the opposing team's pitcher. So when the Braves come up to bat we want to write down who's pitching for the Yankees. And we're going to do that by looking at the opposing team's lineup card. So the Yankees have in their number one position, which is the pitching position, Matthew Yu pitching. So what we're going to do is we're going to take Matthew's number, his uniform number, and we're going to write it up here. So that anyone who looks at the scorebook can see that in the first inning, in the bottom of the first inning, because the Braves are home, number five from the Yankees was pitching. And this is very important to keep in mind throughout all of the scorekeeping process during the game, is that anyone should be able to look at your book and figure out some key information, how many runs were scored in each inning, who pitched in each inning, information like that is very important. So before the game starts, this is what our book should look like. We should have our lineups written out. We should have the pitcher of the opposing team in that spot, the teams, the home or away, the location, the time. Also, if we're pitching in a non-consecutive batting order, which would be the minors or major division, we would have substitutes down at the bottom, ready to be written in once they're subbed in. If this was a consecutive batting order in the tiny division, 
we would have them all written out with their own box for each division. And that is how we set up the scorebook.